Okay, guys. All right. So what we're going to be learning here is understanding data, how to interpret, how to read, how to know about the data. And we're going to learn that a spreadsheet is a table. So pretty much we're going to be understanding how to read data in a table, right? Um, we're going to use spreadsheet to bring that out. Now, we're not going into details in this spreadsheet, just some basic stuff. This is an introduction, right? So I want you to pause whatever you're doing, focus. And of course, this video comes to your compliments, chosen one TV. So make sure you would have like, subscribe, and of course you can comment after and let us know how helpful this video was. All right, on with the business, on with the business. Okay, so a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet is a table, and this table here we're talking about is not a table that has four legs and you know you put in your living room and so on. This is an electronic table. An electronic table is made up of rows, yeah? And we know that rows run across, right? And they're made up of columns. Columns run down or downwards. Or instead of saying across, we could say horizontally. And instead of saying downwards, we could say vertically. Same thing, right? Now, where a row and a column intersect, yeah, we call it a cell. So let me, let, me, let me pause and let me rewind, right? So we're looking at a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet is a table used to organize and present data and so on, right? Um, and it's made up of rows. Rows run across uh, horizontally. And it's made up of columns which run downwards or vertically. Where a row and a column intersect, we call it a cell, right? Where a row and a column intersect, we call it a cell. Now listen to this. We name the cell after the column first and then the row. So what would this cell be called? Again, we name the cell after the column and then the row. So what would this cell be called? Yes, correct. E6. So if we go here, this cell will be called B7. If we come up here, it's going to be called D2. And note, you have a lot of cells all around. The active cell is a cell that has a heavy bottom around, around it, right? And Excel does a nice thing here by lighting up the column and the row or you can even watch here in the name box and see which cell is the active cell right and the active cell is just the cell that is currently selected right and again you know it by a heavy border right now now so so far they got it right nice 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 we're doing well we're doing well right now again as i said the objective here is to understand um, basic data presented in a table, right? And we're using Microsoft Excel, which is a spreadsheet application software to bring that out. Right, now I have some sample data here. Let me zoom it up a bit. Let me zoom it up a bit. Ding, ding, ding. Right, and again, I wouldn't be pointing out formatting and all of these separate things and how to zoom because we're not really doing an Excel tutorial. We're doing how to present, how to understand information in a table, right? And we just do a little on, since we're using Excel, right? We just want to know a little about Excel um, in terms of understanding through Excel wise. Now, we have some sample data here. So we have some students and then we have how they did in the subjects. So right away from watching this information in the table here, we can know it's about students because 
we see the subjects, right? English, A, English, B, all of the stuff are normally in a school. School have students, right? So without even this table having a title, we can say, listen, the table is about students and how much they got in the various subjects, right? So we see name, we see them. These are our headings here. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So let's see what is obvious about this first. Again, understanding and interpreting data in a table. So we can see that we have nine students. Nine students. We can see their names. And we can see that the format of how their names are by last name. Last name, then a comma, and then the first name, right? And we can see the different marks they got and the grade to those marks, right? Now watch here. Data can be sorted in two main ways. What you call ascending and descending. Now ascending when it comes to text means like from A to Z. We normally say in alphabetical order. Right? Ascending order. Yeah? A to Z. Now, if it was numbers and it was sought in ascending order, it would be from the lowest number to the highest number. Let me say that again. If it was the numbers, if it was numeric values that were sorted in ascending order, it will be from the lowest value to the highest value. So zero would have been at the top. Then let me see, then 44, and then the last one would have been 87, from lowest to highest, or from A to Z, ascending. And then there's descending, which is totally the opposite. Yeah, so descending would mean from Z to A. So if I was to sort these names here, I'm in descending order, which name would come first? Correct. Donald Trump would come first in descending order. Now, if I was to sort the English marks here in descending order, yes, yes, you're learning, you're learning, that's good. 87 would come at the top because descending in terms of numbers would be a highest number to your lowest number, right? No, so you're doing well, you're doing well, right? Um, remember what I said, right? A cell is named by the column and then by the row. So if I was to ask you, what cell holds the name Lionel Messi? Yeah, and I try to get some football or something or like a related famous people, right? What cell stores the name Lionel Messi? Right, correct, yes, uh, what well, Dolly Bright, there's some intelligent students here. B5, uh, wow, <laughs> sorry, B, B6, B6, I forget to put my phone on silent, I'm teaching now, B6, yeah, sorry, I saw that there's a five here, now the five here is a number, yeah, um, but we go by the cell, you see, because we didn't start at one up here, he's number five on the list, right, so don't make the mistake I just did there. Observe properly, right? Now I can say, listen, hey, what? Uh, let me get a question for you. I jump back here. Yeah, sorry to tell you the truth. I, I paused there to take a call. So let me see. I was saying, okay, right. So we need to know how to identify cells, right? So if I ask you, listen, how much did Sam Murray got in English B? Right? The answer to that would be 62. You don't tell me E8 because I didn't ask you what cell is it stored in. I asked you how much he got. So you, got, you trace English B, you look for English B, and you look for the mark, and you see 62. So you said, listen, Sam Murray got 62 in English B. Right? If I say, listen, we need to learn about a range. Now, what a range is, a range is really from one point to the next, right? So, 
if I ask you, I said, listen, from what cell, or tell me the cell range, I would find the English B marks, right? So you watch, you examine your table, and we can see that the first English B mark starts from E2, and the last one is E10. So how do you answer this? Yeah, you, so if I was to give you a quiz, right, and you, you had to enter it, or you had to select the option, it would be like this. E2, colon, E10. Let me, let me zoom up that, that there bit, right? This is how you would write the answer. And we, so we write it like this, E2 colon E10, and we pronounce it E2 to E10, right? Let me take that over again. The range, range, if you actually identify a range, a range is from one point to the next, and it doesn't only run down, it can run across, right? So if I say, listen, what range of cell has the English B marks, right? You would say E2, that's the first one here, and the last one here is E10, right? E2, to E10, if I say what range have the marks for mathematics it will be k2 to k10 and again range will only run down it runs across or diagonal so the table range here would be a1 you do that diagonal points a1 colon l10 a1 yeah that's how you would get this or you could do the other diagonal which is l l1 to or you could say um um a10 to l1 right range i run across is just simple so if i said what range of cells have the the max and scores for Keith Mitchell, it will be C7, C7 down to L7, right? No, so we're doing well there, we're doing well there, right? Um, so I want you to play over this video several times, several times, several times, and sink in the information that you um, would have gotten here because I would do a nice short quiz for you to test and see if you retain that knowledge, right? Remember, this video comes to you, compliments chosen one TV. Yeah, like, comment, subscribe, share the thing. You understand? Share it to your other. Um, well, I mean, the classmates, your classmates will get it, but share your classmates with other schools and so on. Yeah, all right, guys. Thanks for listening, and I hope to get some nice review on Chosen One TV there, right? You know, Chosen One TV caters for everything. We do pranks, we do social entertainment, we do education, we do comedy, we do gospel. So we have something for everyone, yeah, or at least we try to. All right, thanks again until next time. So this was Understanding Table Information and so on using Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. Alrighty. Goodbye.